Thanks for staying with us. Two Face actually came online to debunk accusation of him impregnating a banker. We talked about this edition. According to report, Nigerian musician Two Face Innocent has finally broken silence over reports of him impregnating a banker. The musician started to his Instagram page on Monday, that's August of 15, 2022, where he mocked those who have been spreading rumors about him impregnating a banker. In a post which read, when I too like Belemata, see people we not even know who be their senator, just the insult upon something we do not even get idea about it, about them. We are well done. Father, forgive them for their brains have been fried, he wrote. Two phase management had released a communique debunking the, uh, the pregnancy report. In a communique, we state, two about pregnancy reports as fake news. It is understandable that for fans, friends and concerned members of the public to get curious and seek to know what actually happened. But two Baba posted to apologize to the wife, Annie, family and management a few days ago. It is normal that fans should be curious to know what actually happened. But then, the music star's management advised the public to disregard themselves from any rumors. The reports of him getting any woman pregnant are totally false and malicious. And we urge meaningful media platforms and members of the public to completely dis disregard such information. It is fake news. It, the, the information stated. In a communique, it was stated that the information is just false and malicious. It should be recorded that Two-Face shared an interesting post on his Instagram page a few days ago. The music star apologizes to his wife, kids, family members, and for being an embarrassment to the family. Well, we don't know why he did that, but then, please, if you're curious, the communique is just stating that the rumors are actually fake. It was not true. So to you other who is spreading that, you should be aware that Two-Face did not actually impregnate the bank. According to their communique, we talk about our next story. We are talking about what is transpiring in Big Brother House. We talk about how Adekule and Sheikhs had a fierce encounter in the house. That is a Big Brother House level of housemates. Adekule and Sheikhs were inches away from punching each other during a fierce altercation on Tuesday night, where Adekule calmly answered Ebuka saying that he believed that the ship might be a mere strategy. This word did not sit well for Sheikhs, who quickly confronted him soon after the live eviction show ended. The book explained their point of view with Sheikhs, emphasizing the fact that he was serious about Bella, a point that Adekuli agrees to respect. The animosity did not reach a trust on Sunday night. Later on Tuesday, Sheikhs tackled Adekuli for allegedly saying he is not intellectual. Sheikhs cautioned the former head of house to keep his mouth out of his mouth and refined the meddling in his business. Soon after, the conversation escalated into shouting contest that requires the intervention of other housemates. Adekule told Sheikhs never to call him stupid and also stop referring to him as his brother, Sheikhs in-house lover. Bella took him away from the scene in order to reduce the tense atmosphere. Noting that Khaled has also been evicted from the Big Brother Niger season 7 house, with this, he becomes a 7 level 2 housemate in level, level up season. He will be evicted in the ongoing Big Brother Niger reality show that's on Sunday evening. It should be recalled that the Big Brother Niger season 7 level 2 housemates that we are up to possible eviction include Lebaye, Govi, Khaled, Brian, and Fina. That's a report for you, but we're looking forward to Sunday. What will be happening? Happening in Sunday in the Big Brother house, who is going home, and of course, we'll also look at uh, what will happen. Are they going to be punished for this act of theirs? We'll also talk a mother in the West region. This is a sad page. We talk a mother in the West region who actually poisoned the daughter in law and his son. Now, people are asking, what actually happened? Why should a mother do that? I mean, it is not a Nigerian movie, it's a reality. According to report, the 23-year-old girl who lived with a boyfriend in Yawundi had travels to give birth beside a mother of her boyfriend before she met her own death. She gave birth a month ago, but continued her maternity holiday with her boyfriend's mother, whom on August 4 decided to poison her food and that of already one-month-old grandson. Both consumed the food and started feeling weak. They were hurriedly transported to the Mboda district hospital, but the poison had taken full control and the innocent soul died. 
where others also reveal that this woman has never loved the girl and also asked her to leave the son, but the son proved stubborn and didn't want to leave this girl. The girl is not there because of the wrath of hatred and her only crime was because she loves this wicked woman, according to reports. However, some other reports state that the reason why this woman hated this girl was not stated, but other thing, maybe it's because the girl was not from the same tribe with the boy. The mother-in-law later gave up herself to the police and confessed for killing those two, after which the doctor could not save their lives. What the world viewers, why you think about that we stay on stay on a sad page, where it is two-year-old girl actually killed a two-year-old son. How two-year-old son? Because she felt the son was a hindrance to her partying lifestyle. We talk that where Alice Rose, a two-year-old mother of Lucica, has uh, killed her own child by pressing a pillow on the child's face, suffocating him because he was a hindrance to her partying lifestyle. It was said that she did that because of her boyfriend, and now the two are detained at the Kawota hospital police station facing a possible charge of murder. According to sources, sources previous to the incident, Rose, who is original from the Koba Bet, came to stay with her sister in Losoka. However, Rose's life of late night partying in various nightclubs around the capital city where neglect, while neglecting her son was a call for concern. Aged two years old and seven months, forced her sister to give her a matching order to return to the cover bed. After being given money to facilitate her travel to the cover bed, Rose linked up with her lover, booked themselves in a lodge and where they actually killed the child. The couple then got the pillow pressed on the face of the helpless child until he was unable to breathe, after which they sneak out of the lodge and lifeless body of the child and returned to the sister's place and laid the child on the couch as if the child was just sleeping. Upon noticing that the child was unresponsive after being checked, Rose's elder sister rushed to the university teaching hospital where she confirmed the child was dead. And upon interrogation, it was confirmed that Rose McKellen confessed ending the child's life and these two are being detained at the Kwawata police station. Well, we look forward to justice being prevailed for those two people. On to our next story, we talk. The organizers of Stanley Enon Azabai show in Dubai came online to, to apologize to people, to the public, for what actually happened happened. Note that this is a follow-up of the story we talked about Stanley Enu and Asaba, where they actually went to Dubai to perform but this was a war for failure and fingers were being pointed at the organizers who was not other than from Otans. According to report, the frontline organizers of Stanley Eno and Asabat, Lee Show in Dubai from Otans, apologized for the war for failure where she admits it was a mess. She says she never ran away from failure and she was actually in shock. She wrote in a post Good afternoon and happy Sunday to everyone. That was on Sunday. My close and extended family, my friends and my followers, I'm very grateful to God Almighty for your, persist, for your presence in my life at this time. Well, they, where should I start? I have decided to call the Dubai show Dabukul and my role in it. I cannot lie. I have no energy to waste in pretending. I barely, I'm barely still recovering from the state of shock. I am here to testify that I now understand the meaning of phrase, failure is never easy to handle. But contrary to some malicious reports, I ran, I never ran away from my failure. I was in shock. I'm now recovering and I'm still standing. I owe all of you, even those who don't know me, an honest apology for any personal failure of mine, for anything I may have done or failed to do that leads to Dubai's failure. Dubai's show failure. I apologize to my stars, Stanley Eno and Asaba, who both deserve better than the mess they saw, they saw in Dubai. Today, the focus of my message is to admit that it was a mess, and that, that is truly, I'm sorry. Personally, I'm sorry. Well, that was a post from her. At least it's genuine. Maybe if she could come online to apologize for what actually transpired, and then I hope. Stanley Eno and Asaba do forgive her. On to our next story, we talk about Cameroonian entertainers who were actually uh, paid to perform, but they actually took pictures with Samuel Etofis and they were showcasing on social media. This was a problem to Mr. Bliss, who came on. That was just what happened, and then we talk about something else. I mean, we talk about a veteran comedian 
Zakole, who actually questioned Samuel Itofis for not inviting her at the cocktail dinner party. According to report, veteran comedian Zakola, Zakola Sari, who was not invited by Samuel Itofis for the cocktail dinner, has expressed her disappointment and frustration when she says Samuel Itofis is equally supposed to invite entertainers who were not known to Facebook, TikTok. She said... I would first like to congratulate Samuel Itofis for the work he is doing in Cameroon and the football field in general. You invited many artists, Lido, Chantal, Mustique the Charismatic, and many others. But I also want to remind you that there are legends in this country that are people who did not make their names through Facebook, TikTok, but you didn't invite them. There was a time when even watching television was a luxury and a privilege of many. I am part of the legend of the comedy, and if other legends like you do not call us to guide this youth on certain occasions, who then will? We know life before subscribers are life of these subscribers. You, young people have to know how to disassociate the toes from the prisons. Finally, do we have anyone to recognize our true value? Or is there when there is no is there when we are no longer alive when you truly know that we exist in your eyes? I don't speak to tell the cultural promoters who beyond the visibility following the subscribers of these they invite must also hold the advancement of their culture. Please forward this message to the right quarters. Well that was her saying it, but then we hope that uh, Samuel Itofis gets her message and then responds to it as it do. We also talk in Nigerian-based Cameroonian who has been faking visa and the many Cameroonians has been victim of this man's fraudulence. According to report, more than, more than 30 Cameroonians are stranded in Abuja, Lagos, a victim who reached out to the media saying that the supposed travel agent called Jamie, popularly known as Doctor, is said to have promised many visas to travel to Southern American countries. He is from Tico and presently wanted by the Nigerian police. And as the victim narrated, I am talking with deep regret. He is the one making money, making many Cameroonians to be stranded in Abuja and Lagos. He has run away from um, with almost two million. A victim lamented. Jamie is accused of working with his girlfriend and other fake agency in Cameroon to scam people looking for greener pastures above abroad. These sets are always vulnerable and can do anything to travel unknowingly to them. These are fake agents. All the fake Colombians and uh, all the fake Colombians agents, they are everywhere. He is also working in Boya, Douala, and Yaoundé. He cautioned, well, this is a victim of this man's scandal. I mean, cautioning Cameroonians, those who are desperate to travel out, please be well. There are such people outside who are just there to take your money. So if you're that vulnerable and you're that desperate to travel out, do well to use the right means, okay? Then go get something cheap because you want to travel out and get yourself into trouble. Well, we leave you in that. We also talk a Ghanaian footballer at the age of 36 who has returned, I mean, due to Roger Miller's encouragement. According to reports, Asoma Gayan, a Ghanaian superstar footballer at the age of 36, is not done with football. Being inspired by Roger Miller, the Cameroon legend football who did not come to his football career, who is not done with his football career. He wants to make a comeback at the World Cup. In a post which read, anything can happen. You know, it has happened before. It has happened before. I'm talking about Cameroon in 1994 with Roger Miller. You know, coming back from retirement to play in the World Cup. I have retired. I've not retired yet. I've not announced my retirement. You know, I have been out for almost two years now due to injuries, due to my body pain. I just need to get back my body and in shape. So I have started training, of course. So I need to get back in shape and see how my body reacts to playing competition football. Talent-wise, I record it's there. Also, I just have to prepare physically and then I will see what happens. There might be a surprise. Gayana who... Guyan, who was a hero in Ghana in 2010 World Cup, said so. Well, we look forward to him coming back to the team. And of course, we also talk Ajara, who has offered two million to great players, to outstanding players in Cameroon. According to reports, 
Ajura offers 2 million outstanding players in Cameroon, where it is said he has offered a sum of 2 million CFR to some Guinea Super, Super League players who distinguish themselves during the 2021-2022 session. It is stated that as a Guinea's and as a Guinea Super League ambassador, it is my duty today to encourage all the talent, especially those who have stood out the most during the session. She offered the top scorer of the season, 500,000 CFR, to best goalkeeper of the season, 500 fans CFR, to the best coach of the season, 500 fans, that's 500,000 CFR, and of course, to special bonus for the players who has been a woman of Guinness School, that's uh, 500,000 francs. We say thank you to Jetrain uh, Ajara for that brilliant work. And of course, we leave you on that because that story brings us to the end of today's edition of our newscast. For presentation, I was Gracious Berlin. We urge you to keep watching CMTV for more informative, entertaining programs. It happens just here. The person I think about was none other than Madame Christian Nabila. General supervision came in from Mr. Bobe Kwanchamba. Till we meet again, stay tuned and stay out of trouble. Bye-bye.